What is going on everyone? So in this week's video, I'm gonna continue the theme as far as sharing some photos that have something in common. Uh, talk about those photos, talk about the composition, talk about the thoughts that went into creating the photos. And in this week's video, the theme between the photos is uh, photos with placed subjects. And this is a little bit of a touchy subject when it comes to landscape photography. Uh, there are some that view landscape photography as strictly kind of a documentarian sort of thing or as your document as far as what you see. Um, and there's other people that say you know, have to kind of create those photos and sometimes it takes the hand of man to be able to do that. And I have some thoughts on that which I'll talk about kind of after I share these photos based on kind of what I've learned from doing this. But in the past, if I've ever tried to place leaves in a scene or rocks in a scene or something like that, to me, I never really liked those photos. There's something about it where I just looked at it and said, you know, the fact that I had to put the leaf there, it just glares at me after the fact. It just looks so intentional in a really bad way. But it was in uh, 2015, uh, when I was on a trip to Zion in the fall that uh, I took probably the first photo of a place subject that I was actually pretty happy with. And then I shot another one uh, last year as well in Zion with a placed subject. And again, that's one that I was also happy with. These are two photos that have made it to my portfolio. And so I'll start by talking about the photo I shot last year. So I was hiking through a wash on uh, sort of the east side of Zion. And uh, I found this really cool stretch of sandstone that I had not noticed in years past, even though I had walked past it, that particular stretch of the wash many, many times. So either I was completely oblivious in past years, or maybe there was some sand or rock or a tree trunk or something was kind of covering that area up. But this time when I was walking through there, I saw this really nice, curvy, wavy stretch of sandstone with some really nice lines working their way through it. And I knew that this would make for a nice, kind of a close-up sort of photo. So I brought my camera in there and tried to set up a composition. And what became immediately apparent is I needed something to anchor that photo. I needed something to ground the photo, to give it a sense of life, to give it a sense of depth and of scale. And so I figured, you know, this is probably where a leaf would work pretty well as far as, you know, anchoring that shot. And the sandstone was kind of a earth tone sort of stripes along with kind of a, it was against sort of a, a neutral sort of sandstone, kind of like a warm tones a little bit maybe, but it wasn't like a really colorful sandstone. So I was looking around and I found some red maple leaves and I found some brown oak leaves. And I think the initial thought for a lot of people is grab that, you know, that really nice red maple leaf, put it down there. And uh, I tried it, it just didn't look right. It, it looked really contrived. It didn't look well because I think the, um, the leaf didn't really match the actual sandstone in the background. So then I tried an oak leaf. It was kind of a, a little more of a rounded leaf, sort of earthen tones. I placed it down. I gotta say, it actually looked pretty nice because the color, the texture, the shape, all that kind of matched the background. So you had the sandstone, you had the leaf, and they really complement each other. They weren't fighting each other for attention. And uh, so I went ahead and I placed that in the lower right third of the composition, kind of framed the, uh, the lines of the sandstone in a way that seemed like it was rather soothing, kind of moved your eye through the frame. And it was a little bit of a tricky photo just because in terms of depth of field, the sandstone kind of had this kind of trough in it where if you skim your uh, plane of focus right along it, some areas are going to be out of focus, some areas are going to be in focus, but I managed to capture all the most important areas there. And I went ahead and exposed it in, um, it was all in reflected light, but some of the light was a little bit warmer, some of it was a little bit cooler. And when I was reviewing my film from that trip, I was really drawn to the cooler reflected light because now the sort of neutral sandstone went a little bit cooler, a little bit bluish in tone. And then the lines were kind of a little bit more of kind of a brown color, which really was a nice match for the leaf. So you have this nice warm, cool color contrast, but on a really subtle scale and some really beautiful, subtle reflected light. So I was really happy with the way that this one turned out. And to me, it has a really calm feeling to it, which is something that I usually strive for in the photos. And even though when you look at the photo, you know that yes, that leaf was placed there, somehow it still kind of fits because the textures and the colors all kind of match pretty well. So the next photo I'm gonna talk about, this was taken back in 2015. And I was hiking through actually the same wash in Zion. 
And uh, there was some really beautiful reflected light I was walking through. And it had rained uh, maybe a day or two before I was there in Zion. And so some fresh water had kind of uh, went through all the washes there and kind of reset the sand and all the rocks and pebbles in a really beautiful way. And I found this area of kind of drying mud that looked really, really nice. It was actually drying sand, I should say, because um, basically as the water is flowing through, it creates these nice ripples in the wet sand. And then as it dries, there's this sort of in-between time when it's not quite wet, not quite dry, kind of in the middle where it looks the absolute most beautiful. Because when all the sand is wet, it's all kind of uniform looking. I mean, it's cool, it's got some cool textures to it, but it's not as nice looking as when it's partially dried because then you get these swirls and it still has a nice form to it. But then when the sand is completely dry, it, again, it kind of loses those swirls and those lines. It just kind of becomes really flat and uniform, kind of like it was when it was wet, but just kind of a lighter tone. But I found this really nice stretch of this drying sand and I, it was in this perfect reflected light, really strong, strong reflected light. And it's right at the foot of a red maple tree. And there were some red leaves kind of on the ground nearby. And so I chose one of those leaves. I placed it right there in the scene. I moved it probably a foot and a half, maybe two feet at most, to put that leaf into the scene. And composed it so, again, the leaf is in the lower right corner. And I angled it just so that it was catching the light because the light was kind of coming from the left side and slightly behind me as far as where the camera was. And uh, basically just kind of framed up in a way where it's just nothing but the sand and the leaf right in there. And this was one where uh, the red leaf worked really well because I was in a really strong, warm light. And so that red wouldn't have been overpowering. If anything, that red really kind of goes with all the swirls and textures and contrasts from it a little bit, but not so much so that it feels really out of place. And again, this is a photo where when you look at the scene, you'll say, yes, the photographer placed that leaf right there. But for some reason, for me at least, this is a sort of scene where it seems just fine to do that. But if you have more of a wide angle scene, like with a stream, there's a rock in the foreground, there's like three leaves arranged on there. They're all like facing up and, you know, all kind of facing towards the camera just the right way. For some reason, when I see a scene like that, it really stands out to me in a not very good way. I think because you have this beautiful sort of undisturbed scene with these leaves that were very obviously placed right there. It kind of pulls me out of it and makes me just think about the photographer reaching over and putting those leaves on the rock as opposed to you know, thinking that it maybe kind of was that way by nature. But there's something about the more intimate landscapes where I've had a lot more success doing that, I think because, it, yeah, it is really obvious that the photographer put it there. There's no question that the photographer put that there. But at the same time, I can sort of pick and choose, you know, you have just the simple background texture of the sand or the sandstone. You have the foregrounds or the, you have the, the shape of the leaf, the color of the leaf, and you kind of match them in just the right way where it becomes more of a graphical element as far as just something sort of placed in a, a wide angle photo. But, I'd be curious to have your guys' thoughts as far as placing uh, any sort of subjects in scenes. Um, and basically, I've just found that for the intimates, I can do okay with that. But for the wider shots, it just kind of uh, becomes a cliche at some point. But I want to thank everyone for watching, and we'll see you around next time.